Macaulay is the perfect starter Dendro character for free-to-play players and spenders alike. Aside from the absolute glow-up that she had from her younger manga self, there's a lot to love about Kale from a gameplay perspective. She's super easy to understand, yet very effective. Her builds are simple, her support isn't locked behind later constellations, and being Dendro allows her to work with a variety of characters. As always, this guide will cover the best artifacts and weapons to general playstyle and team compositions. Let's not waste any more time and get this channel's very first 3.0 character guide rolling. Our beloved 4-star Dendro character is quite simple as I mentioned in the intro, but just like any other character, there are two essential things that you need to know about Kole. Beyond her basic abilities, the first essential thing to understand about Kole is her energy generation. Like most other off-field damage and support characters, energy is a big issue to consider. On paper, Kale's elemental skill has a 12 second cooldown and the boomerang generates 3 dendro particles for the first enemy it hits on the way out. Her elemental burst costs 60 energy with a 15 second cooldown. 60 energy is the mid-tier of energy cost so it might lead people to think that her energy isn't that much of an issue but unfortunately, 3 dendro particles every 12 seconds is a rough number to work with during rotations. More often than not, you're only going to get to use Kale's skill once in a rotation which can lead to some energy problems. So, how do we fix this? First things first, one small adjustment every player can make is to throw her elemental skill first, then cast her elemental burst second. Doing so will allow Kale to absorb the dendro particles herself for more energy and not waste any unnecessary time on the field that your other characters could be using. It's a quick fix for any player who's using her elemental burst first and it works in pretty much all situations. Luckily for you, other ways for Kale to fix her energy problem are plentiful and accessible despite being one of the only Dendro characters we have right now. The most conventional way is through energy recharge bows, with the most notable being Favonius Bow and Elegy of the End. Other ways include getting her C1 to increase her energy recharge stat off-field, or pairing her with certain teammates. Obviously, Tignari and Dendro Traveler are your only options for Dendro energy, but there are a lot of other characters that are inherently good with Dendro and generate a ton of energy naturally, such as Raiden Shogun or Fischl. The second essential thing that you need to know about Kole is her internal cooldown. The rate at which she applies Dendro to enemies with her elemental burst is expected, where she can only apply the Dendro element every 2.5 seconds with her elemental burst. The funny thing is, with Kole, even the 3 hit rule doesn't apply to her burst, so that means the maximum amount of time that you can apply Dendro with one burst is 4 different times if we include the extended burst duration from her Ascension 4 talent. You might be thinking, this is actually not that good. But don't completely write off Kole though, because what she lacks in her elemental burst is made up for the first Ascension talent and her constellation too. Her Ascension Talent gives her continuous Dendro damage if a party member triggers a Dendro reaction before her Boomerang returns, while her C2 even removes this condition and gives her consistent Dendro damage ticks, which also can apply separate instances of Dendro onto the enemy. If we isolate the Burst or we isolate her Ascension Talent, then it seems like Kale doesn't have a lot of Dendro application, but if we combine the two, then Kale becomes a pretty good support to apply Dendro. With this info in mind, we're now equipped to talk about Kale's best artifacts and weapons. Moving into artifact, her set bonuses are super simple to pinpoint, but her artifact stats are where most players struggle to make a decision. To quickly get the artifact sets out of the way, there's no question that her best artifact set is going to be the 4 set Deepwood Memories. As I mentioned in my previous video, reducing the Dendro resistance of enemies not only buffs your own damage, but also any other Dendro reaction from your other characters that deal Dendro damage, such as Bloom, Spread, or Hyperbloom. As such, I'd like to compare it to the 4-set Viridescent Veneera for how well it supports both Kale's personal damage and her team's overall damage. If you're a Kale player, you need to be in this domain after farming her talents and boss ascension materials. If you want to bolster Kale's personal damage, your two other options are going to be the 4-set Gilded Dreams or the 4-set Emblem of Severed Fate. The 4-set Gilded Dreams is decent for Kale but not nearly as powerful as it is on a character like Tignari. As for the 4-set Emblem of Severed Fate, at 200% ER not only does it solve Kale's energy problem, but it also can come close to the damage output of the 4-set Deepwood Memories. The only issue here is that the set has zero supportive capabilities in return. Other options like the 4-set Noblesse Oblige, 4-set Instructor, and 4-set Exile are all universal support options that you can never go wrong with. Just note that these artifact sets are pure support options and plummet Kale's personal damage. 
Noblesse is always a safe option to gather using the Artifact Strongbox system, while the Force at Exile is one of the safest 4-star artifact options due to energy being a universal mechanic. Meanwhile, the Force at Instructor is heavy on the EM side, so it's damage support for some of the Dendro reactions that I mentioned before. In general, Kali wants to focus the standard DPS build of ER or Attack Percent in the Sands, Dendro Damage Bonus in the Goblet, and Crit Rate or Crit Damage in the Circlet. Typically, Attack Percent in the Sands is standard when you have a weapon with an Energy Recharge stat. Otherwise, you're probably going to want ER in the Sands because Kale wants to aim for around 200% Energy Recharge to keep her burst up consistently. Substat focus should be Crit Rate, Crit Damage, Energy Recharge, Attack Percent, and then Elemental Mastery. Some people may consider a full EM build, but with the low drop rate of EM pieces and rapidly growing cast of characters that build full EM, I'd advise against it for most Kale players. The situation where I'd recommend an ER EM EM build or a triple EM build is if you're running either the 4 star artifacts Exile or Instructor because it would be a lot harder to get good crit stats on 4 star artifacts. As for weapons, regardless of whether or not you want your Kale to deal damage or be a pure support, the best options remain consistent due to her need for energy. This of course leads us to the Elegy of the End which is her best in slot. Elegy gives a large ER stat and provides hefty support to the team with its passive. Pair this weapon with the 4 set Deepwood Memories and you have yourself a deadly combo. At the number 2 spot we have Favonius Warbow. This bow is the go-to option for free-to-play players if you don't have Elegy. Getting the extra energy particles from the passive and the huge ER stat on the weapon can lower your energy requirement by 20-30%. to 30%. This puts your new benchmark values at around 170 to 180 energy recharge. This is some super solid stuff considering you can get this bow for free after the Mondstadt prologue. Beyond these two standout options for Kale, it becomes harder to rank her weapons. In consideration of consistent damage, your next best options are going to be the Stringless, Molun's Moon, and the Alley Hunter. All three bows are solid options to run with the 4 set Deepwood Memory set and are very comfortable with an ER Sands. The string list gets noticeably better than the other two options on team focused on spread reactions for Kale, but otherwise these three options are quite comparable for damage. It's also worth noting that the crit options like Polar Star, Aqua Simulacra, and Skyward Harp can perform better for damage than the 4 star options that I just listed, simply because they make Kale easier to build, not because these weapons are synergistic with Kale's kit. After the Stringless, Molens Moon, and Alley Hunter, the next best options include the new free-to-play Fishbow, End of the Line, the Chasm Event Bow, Fading Twilight, and the Sacrificial Bow. Although with notably lower damage than options like the Stringless or Molens Moon, End of the Line and Fading Twilight are both energy recharge options that players get for free, so they're always worth considering for Kale. The final section of this video covers Kale's best teams, which I'm sure many players are curious about. The community is still hazy about Dendro reactions and trying out new combinations, so today I'll just give you some of the more popular Kali teams from her release, as well as my personal favorite team. To start off, let's talk about the most popular setup with Kali, Quicken, Aggravate, and Spread. Quicken is created by combining Dendro and Electro to put the enemy in the Quicken state. When the enemy is in this state, any attack that applies Electro will trigger Aggravate and gain a flat damage buff, similar to the way that Shen He and Yunjin buff your character. The same thing can be said for spread, except you'd want to apply Dendro onto the enemy in the Quicken state instead of Electro. Kale is great at supporting Electro DPS characters with access to Aggravate and also supporting Dendro DPS characters with access to spread. An Aggravate team looks something like Kale, an Electro DPS, an Electro support, and an Animo unit to swirl Electro. Your on-field Electro DPS characters are most often going to be Raiden Shogun or Keshing, while your off-field Electro characters are Yaimiko, Fischl, Beto, and Kukishinobu. The last slot is most commonly going to be Kazuha or Sucrose, but without Kukishinobu, the team lacks survivability, so you can always slot in Zhongli, Jean, or Sayu as needed. If you want to make this a spread-focused team over an aggravate-focused team, then replace your Raiden Shogun or Catching with Tignari. Your off-field Electro can still be Fischl, Yai, Shinobu, or even Raiden Shogun if you want, but just don't use Beto because Tignari does not abuse normal attacks. The next team for Kale is a Burning Team. Unlike any other teams, a pure Burning Team is very straightforward and works a lot like mono Pyro setups. Your team is going to have Kale, a Pyro DPS, a Pyro Support, and an Animo character. The Pyro DPS slot is often going to be Shangling, but is not limited to just Shangling. 
Pretty much every pyro DPS works in this slot like Hu Tao, Yoimiya, Klee, etc. But Shangling is a safe option that everyone has access to and pairs extremely well with Bennett. And of course, as you guessed, for the pyro support, this is 100% going to be Bennett since after all, aside from the burning reaction, we're dealing with just raw pyro damage, so we need as much buffing power as we can get. Of course, this means that the animal slot is going to be Kazuha or Sucrose with the four-set Viridescent Venera again. Last but not least, we have my favorite team, which is the Bloom team with Kole. The idea of a pure Bloom team is not as strong as something like Aggravate, but I'm a huge fan of Hydro characters, so it's a team I find myself falling back to often. Hydro application is extremely important in Bloom teams, and with the release of Yelan, the Genshin community has gotten a fondness for running double Hydro characters to support teams like Hutao Vaporize and Electrocharged. The premise is the same here where we make sure we can generate a Bloom Seed as consistently as possible with Double Hydro. The importance of this lies in the fact that 5 Bloom Seeds is the maximum amount of seeds that can exist any time on the field. Creating another seed at the maximum of 5 already will detonate a previous existing seed even if it hasn't hit the timer to rupture yet. In the Double Hydro Bloom setup, you're going to have Kale, Kazuha or Sucrose to Swirl Hydro and literally any 2 Hydro characters. You can run the unlimited Hydro Works with Xing Chu and Yelan, or maybe a classic setup with Child and Barbara. Child has some of the best Hydro application in the game, so it's really easy to pair him with a character that has little Hydro application like Barbara, in case you need healing. The reason I mention this is because I want you to keep in mind that Bloom does deal damage to everything around it, including your own characters, so having an Animo or Hydro Healer is crucial to playing around the Bloom reaction. Other than that, that's all I have time for today. There was a ton of information loaded into this video since there's a lot of new explaining to do when it comes to the new Dendro reactions. Let me know down in the comment section below what your Kole build is and what Dendro reaction you like to utilize the most with her. If you enjoyed this guide or thought it was useful, be sure to support both the video and the channel. You can follow me on Twitch or sub to the YouTube channel, whatever people do nowadays. Other than that, it's the same as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.